So today we start our discussion on flow rate and viscosity, which is actually a major thing from this unit and something that we're going to learn how to measure and talk about and what affects it in fluids. So that's what we're getting into today. Uh, so to begin with, viscosity is defined as the property of fluids that describes the thickness or thinness of the fluid. So it's how thick or thin it feels and how it flows. And how do we normally measure viscosity? Well, we measure it by looking at the flow rate of different fluids, which we're going to get into in a moment. So let's talk about the terminology of viscosity and what that means. So the more viscous, the higher the viscosity, okay, the thicker it is. Uh, so you can think of viscous as being like thick, okay, meaning thick. Uh, so higher viscosity means higher thickness. Well, if we have less viscous, a fluid is the thinner it is. It has lower viscosity. So in other words, it's, it's runnier, okay? So I have more viscous, higher viscosity is thicker, and less viscous, lower viscosity is thinner. So we have our thickness or viscosity spectrum, and we could place things on it going from uh, very thick or viscous to obviously less viscous or less thick, or as we could say thin. So based on your knowledge of fluids, could we rank the viscosity of the following things? So high viscosity, meaning thick, to low viscosity, meaning thin. In other words, it can flow very easily. So why don't you take a look and see if you could figure out what the order would be in your mind and we'll see if it matches what I think. So I would say honey is the highest. I think honey is normally quite a bit thicker. And then I would put maple syrup just underneath honey. From here, I'd probably go with ketchup. And then after that, I think I'd go with milk. And then I'd go with pop. And then finally, I'd go with water. Do you agree with that? Or, or would you maybe decide to do something else? I could see these two maybe being switched around, depending on how you view it. Uh, and I could also see maybe these two being switched around, depending on how you view them. Um, I, could, I could argue that. And maybe it depends on the type, right? Maybe, you know, you compare different types of pop or different types of milk. Uh, and, you know, skim milk versus... Um, you know, uh, red zone melted dew. I, I don't know. Uh, maybe it would be, uh, you know, a bit of a toss up there. I'm not sure, but that's where I would put those. So viscosity is a property of all fluids, liquids and gases, right? So remember that when we talk about a fluid, it's something that can pour and can flow. And specifically for states of matter, we're talking about either liquids or gases. Now gases, it's weird to think about viscosity. It's weird to think about a viscous gas. And of course, all gases are way less viscous than when we talk about, uh, let's say, liquids. But still, gases have a viscosity, um, and it's something that we're going to discuss as well. So when we look at any fluid, we can talk about the viscosity of that fluid. We're going to have most of our discussion about liquids, okay, uh, specifically liquids when we talk about fluids, but this applies to gases as well. So flow rate is the way that we measure viscosity. We're going to spend some time on flow rate, but it's how long it takes for a fluid to flow from one point to another, and that's called flow rate. It's basically like a speed. It's the rate of movement. I don't actually like the measurement of how long it takes for a fluid to flow, and in fact, I'd like to, to kind of change that a bit. Uh, we're going to change this as the measurement of the speed with which a fluid flows from one point to another. I like that better. Okay, because this is a rate. Uh, it's a per, you know, time rate. And basically what we're doing when we're doing flow rate is we're calculating a speed. Okay, uh, and we're measuring that in normally centimeters per second. So how many centimeters will the fluid actually flow in a second worth of time. And we use this to compare different you know, fluids. So we'd actually have, and we're gonna do an experiment like this, but we'd have some kind of a ramp or something, and then we pour different fluids down it, 
and basically we would see how long it takes for it to get a certain distance and then from there we can figure out the flow rate from there. So uh, we've already actually talked about this, but out of the three states of matter, which states are considered fluids? And the answer is, of course, liquids and gases, right? Those are the two states that can pour and can flow. Generally, the faster the flow rate, the lower the viscosity and the thinner the fluid. So again, flow rate is our way of actually measuring how viscous things are. So let's go into how we actually can measure flow rate. But before we do that, uh, how would you describe the flow of chocolate sauce to the flow of honey? Which one of these two do you think would have a higher flow rate? In other words, they are less viscous. And of course, it depends on the chocolate sauce or the honey. But I would actually think that chocolate sauce would have a higher flow rate, so it would be less viscous than honey. So it would actually go faster than the honey would. That would be my opinion. Okay, so here is your formula for flow rate. We're going to actually just use the variable or notation of FR to be flow rate. And that's determined by taking the distance that the fluid went divided by the time it took. This time is going to be in seconds. I don't know if you guys can hear my kids right now. They're a little bit rowdier today. And this is the distance which we are going to keep in centimeters for flow rate, which is a little bit different than what we normally use for a speed or velocity. And this flow rate is going to be then in the unit of centimeters per second. So this is how many centimeters something travels within one second as it flows down. So let's say, and I, I'm not a good drawer, okay, but let's say that we set up like a cookie sheet pan or something. Um, uh, and that's, that's what this rectangle is, is the cookie sheet or pan. And let's say that the total distance of this cookie sheet or pan is, and wow, again, just not doing a great job with that. Uh, let's say that it is 50 centimeters. We'll change what I said. 50 centimeters across, okay? So from one end to the other end, we have 50 centimeters. And let's say that we dribble something on here, okay? So we put some, uh, let's say, oil down on that pan, and then it goes and it goes and it goes and it goes all the way across to the very end. And for it to go from this end to this end, it takes 10 seconds. So it took 10 seconds to go from the start of the cookie pan to the end of the cookie pan. So the question is, what is the flow rate of this particular oil? Well, the way that we would figure this out is we would say, well, flow rate is equal to the distance it traveled, 50 centimeters, divided by the time it took, which is 10 seconds. So the flow rate would be 50 divided by 10, so it would be 5 centimeters per second. So that means every second that goes by, it's traveled five centimeters. That's what that means. That's what that unit is. It's how many centimeters it goes each second. Okay, so let's talk about this triangle thing we have going on here. This is a bit of a cheating method in order for us to be able to manipulate a formula without knowing algebra. So some of you maybe have done some algebra and math, some of you maybe haven't, or you really struggle with algebra. So that's what this triangle is for. It's basically a way for us not to have to use algebra. So here's how we fill this out. When we actually use a formula, we go from left to right. So flow rate is equal to distance divided by time. So left, middle, end. Now what we do is whenever we want to know the formula to find one of these things, distance, time, or flow rate, all we have to do is actually just read it off the triangle. So for example, we know then that flow rate is equal to distances on top. So I got D on top, and actually I like this better as a small d, uh, divided by time, which actually I like as a small t. I'm, I'm going to be a pest. I'm going to be a pest. I'm going to change that. And there's a reason why, it's because I am really into proper physics and proper notation, and this is actually just not proper right now. Time is always a lowercase t, 
and distance is lowercase d. Uh, the reason why for time is capital T is normally temperature. Okay, so now that we've got that, it's fr is equal to d over t. Well, what if we wanted to know the formula for time? Well, time is equal to, look, d is on top, so d over fr. Okay, what's the formula for d? Well, I already got d, so d is equal to fr times time. So because it's on the same level, we don't have a fraction there. So essentially, if we have one thing above, one thing below, we have a fraction, we're dividing. Okay, if we've got both things on the same line, we're multiplying them together, if that makes sense. So essentially, time is d over fr, fr is d over t, and d is fr times t. Okay, so we actually get all three formulas from our triangle arrangement. This is the form of the formula that you're normally provided with, which is flow rate is equal to distance divided by time, and that's what we're going to be using most of the time. Okay, so let's move forward. Let's try a question. Oil flows down a 30, cent 30 centimeter ramp in 6.0 seconds. What is the flow rate? Well, first of all, let's write down what we have. We have the distance is equal to 30 centimeters. It gave us that. In 6.0 seconds, that's our time. Time is 6.0 seconds. And it's saying what is the flow rate? So what we're looking for here is flow rate, which we're going to say is FR. That's my question mark. So given the formula that I have, that flow rate is equal to distance divided by time, I have then that flow rate is equal to 30 centimeters divided by 6.0 seconds. So 30 divided by 6. Now just as a, as a moment to talk about the work, you'll notice that I started by actually writing out the things I knew and what I'm looking for. Then I wrote out my original formula, fr is equal to d over t, and then I plugged in the values. And I included the units, centimeters, seconds, those are called units. Uh, it's the unit of measurement, it's what I'm measuring it in. And then I, at the end of the day, get my answer, which is 5.0 seconds. It's really important that when you do work in science, you do these kind of steps. That you write down what you have, what you're looking for, you write down the formula you're using, you plug in values with units, and then you get a final answer that you then write out. Uh, and you also must have the unit, which I did wrong, I'm sorry. The unit for this is centimeters per second. That was a funny error, because I have centimeters divided by seconds, so flow rate is going to be centimeters per second. All right, let's try a different one. The flow rate of syrup is 2.2 centimeters per second. Syrup moved along the track in 55 seconds. What is the length of this racetrack? Uh, so I have 2.2 centimeters per second. That's my flow rate. So FR is equal to 2.2 centimeters per second. I know that the time I had was 55 seconds. And I want to know the distance, the length of the racetrack. So because I'm trying to find distance, I'm going to go back to my triangle here. Distance is equal to flow rate times time. So because flow rate and time are on the same level, they're on the bottom, they're going to multiply. So I have distance is equal to flow rate times time. So again, my original formula is flow rate is equal to d over t. Oh. So here's my triangle. Flow rate is equal to d over t. So then I have my distance is equal to flow rate times time. My time is equal to distance divided by flow rate. And flow rate is equal to distance divided by time. So I can get every formula that I need to use from this. So now I can plug this in. Distance is equal to 2.2 centimeters per second multiplied by 55 seconds. And I'm not going to bother you with a calculator here. I'm just going to use some mental math. 55 times 2 is 110. 0.2 will be 11, so it's going to be 121. 121 centimeters, 121.1 to be precise. Um, no, 121, that's actually just what it is. Okay.
Good. So that is the distance I will have for this question. All right, moving forward. Let's take a look and rank these flow rates from fastest, number one, to slowest, number four. So the fastest will be the one with the highest flow rate. This is here, 7.5. This would be number two. This would be number three. And finally, corn syrup would be number four. So the next question is, which one is the most viscous? Well, the most viscous will be the one with the slowest flow rate. It's the thickest one. So that will be corn syrup. Which one is the least viscous? Well, that would be the water, the one with the highest flow rate. Bear with me here. A more viscous or thick fluid will have a blank flow rate. What do you think the answer to that one is? And the answer is that a more viscous will have a slower flow rate. It'll be a lower number. Sam found that the flow rate for corn syrup was 0.53 centimeters per second. She found the distance of the track was 30 centimeters. How long did it take this fluid to travel down the length of the track? So let's build our triangle, write down what we have, and find an answer. So my flow rate, my FR, is equal to 0 0.53 centimeters per second. My distance for the track was 30 centimeters. And I want to know the time. That's my question mark. So given that flow rate is equal to distance divided by time, this is my fancy triangle here. So because I have this, that means that time is equal to distance divided by flow rate. So D divided by FR. So my time will be equal to 30 centimeters divided by 0 0.53 centimeters per second. So what will that be? I can't do that in my head. I feel like it's going to be 5.9 seconds, but I don't know for sure. So let's go ahead and get a calculator out and give this a go. So we have 30 centimeters divided by 0 0.53. And we have 56.6. I was way off. I went off by a factor like totally the wrong way. 56.6 uh, seconds would be my correct answer for this. All right, 56.6 seconds. So that is my final answer for the amount of time it takes to get across the track. So again, using this triangle, using my formula, I can find all of the correct answers. So viscosity and flow rate. Viscosity is the resistance of flow. And certain properties will actually speed up or slow down a fluid and the flow rate. So let's take a look at what properties are actually going to make the difference. I have particle type, which deals with attractive forces between particles. I have temperature, which is basically how fast the particles are moving and determines how much they're attracted by how much they're able to stick around each other. Um, when we talk about gases, it deals with the number of collisions we have between particles because the faster they're moving, the more collisions we're going to have. And then also, if we take a look at solvent, we can change viscosity as well by adding more solvent or changing the type of solvent I have. So particle type is basically uh, a thing because the more attracted particles are to each other, the less they actually want to move past each other. They want to stick together instead. So it's kind of like there's increased friction, right? So the higher the attraction between particles, the more like friction and harder it is for them to move past each other. The attraction between particles causes the friction, the internal friction of the fluid. So if I have weak attraction, I have very low friction. Uh, well, I have a, if I have strong attraction, then I have very high friction that I'm dealing with here. So for example, if I take a look at water particles, they're able to slip and slide past each other. They have low internal friction uh, compared to oil that has more forces of attraction between molecules of oil. So as a result, they're more attracted and it's harder to get those particles to slip and slide past each other in order to be able to flow. 
Now, when I take a look at gases, it's less important the type of particles and the attraction between particles than it is for liquids. Um, and that's just because they're so spread out that this attraction isn't nearly as much of a factor because they're further away. Like when magnets are further away, right, you don't feel that force of attraction as much as when they're close together. And for a gas, those particles are very far apart. They're very spread out in a gas, as you've learned before. So temperature is a factor in liquids. As a temperature, as the temperature decreases, I should do this the opposite way. The viscosity of a liquid decreases if the temperature increases. As I heat up a liquid, it's going to have a lower viscosity. In other words, it's going to have a faster flow rate. It becomes thinner. If I do the opposite, if I actually decrease temperature, then that means that the liquid will become um, more viscous. It will increase in viscosity. The flow rate will go down. So this is because as we heat a liquid, the particles will move faster, causing them to slip past one another more, and the attractive forces don't take as much of an effect. So the higher I heat up particles, the more the particles are moving in the liquid, and as a result, they are less viscous. They don't experience that attraction between particles nearly as much. Well, gases actually have the opposite effect. If I increase temperature for a gas, it actually becomes more viscous. And that's because as the particles are really spread out and moving around, the higher the temperature, the more the particles actually come together and collide and experience attraction or internal friction. Okay, so as they um, kind of move faster, there's more opportunity for them to get close together. And as they get closer together, then they actually have more attraction and internal friction than they would have otherwise, right? So the faster they're moving, the more interaction takes place between particles. Well, if we decrease the temperature for a, a gas, particles don't have as much chance to come into contact with each other and experience attraction. So as a result, they will have uh, decreased viscosity. They'll be thinner. So gases are the opposite. The higher the temperature, the more viscous it becomes. Heating a gas will give the particles energy. It increases the number of collisions and results in more attraction. Uh, so the more collisions, the less quickly and smoothly the gas will flow. Increase in temperature will increase the viscosity of gases. Well, if I cool a gas, it will take away the energy, decrease the number of collisions, and the less collisions, the more quickly and smoothly the gas will flow. Decrease in temperature will decrease viscosity of gases. So let's actually apply this a little bit and talk about motor oil, right? When I talk about motor oil, um, motor oil acts as a lubricant. It reduces the friction between moving parts in an engine. It reduces the wear and tear of the engine, and it comes in a variety of viscosities to match different temperatures. So if I take a look at oil, there's two numbers normally. There's kind of that first number and then W dash and then a second number. And what those numbers actually mean is it has to do with a measure of viscosity. It talks about the viscosity at a low temperature, which is the first number, and then the viscosity that it reaches at a higher temperature in whatever the thing is actually in. So for example, 10W30, right? It starts at 10 for a lower temperature for its viscosity. And then as it gets to a higher temperature, it actually goes up to a viscosity of 30. I'll be completely honest, I don't know what that unit actually is for the 10 and the 30. Maybe it has to do with a flow rate. I'm not sure. It'd be interesting to find out, something to look up. Another application of this, if we take a look at makeup, like mascara, nail polish and stuff. Solvents dissolve ingredients and act as a fluid when applying the mascara or the nail polish or whatever else, and then evaporates to leave a dry solid finish afterwards. Uh, if mascara or nail polish had too high of a viscosity, it would be hard to apply. Too little, it would just run away. So the solvent and being able to have the proper viscosity for application is really important for that. Painters need to know this when they thicken or thin different paints. For example, if you use paint in a sprayer, you need it to be lower viscosity. So you have to actually add some solvent, that sort of thing. So it's important for painters. Chefs have to know this stuff to make their gravies thinner or thicker to get the properties that they want. Okay, so all these kind of applications for this stuff. So a quick summary of this stuff. Particle type in gases has little effect on viscosity and flow rate due to gases already having low attractive forces because they're so incredibly far apart. They don't really experience that attraction the same way as you would see in liquid state stuff. Uh, when we take a look at gases, we increase temperature, and that means the particles are moving faster, which results in more collisions, more attraction between particles, and as a result, it becomes more viscous, so it has a lower flow rate. If I decrease temperature for a gas, 
The particles slow down. They do not get as close together uh, and have as many collisions. So the attraction goes down between the particles. They experience less attraction from each other. And as a result, we get a lower um, viscosity as a result in a higher flow rate. So they actually become thinner, less viscous. So for gases, higher temperature means higher viscosity. If I take a look at liquids, they have strong attractive forces. So particles matter quite a bit for liquids. And the more attracted these particles are, then the more viscous we have and the lower flow rate. Well, if we take a look at particles that have weaker attractive forces, particles are less attracted. So as a result, they have less attraction, less friction, internal friction, and as a result, they're less viscous and have a higher flow rate. If we take a look at the effect of temperature, if we increase temperature for a liquid, it becomes less viscous because particles can move faster, which means they overcome their attraction a little bit more. They're not staying close together as much, so they're able to actually slip and slide past each other more easily, and they have, as a result, a higher flow rate. Well, if we have liquids, uh, with a decreased temperature, they have then higher forces of attraction between particles, they're slowing down, and as a result, they are more viscous and will have a lower flow rate. So, just kind of a quick summary, let's talk about liquids, which is the main thing we talk about. Uh, if I take a look at high viscosity, so if I have higher viscosity, then this means that I have a lower flow rate, right? If I have lower viscosity, then this means that I have a higher flow rate. Now, how can I actually up the viscosity? Well, one thing I can do is I can lower temperature. So if I lower temperature, that results in a higher viscosity and a lower flow rate. If I raise temperature, that results in lower viscosity and a higher flow rate. It goes faster. Gases, if I have higher viscosity, that still means lower flow rate. And if I have a lower viscosity, that means a higher flow rate. But the way that I actually get gases to have a higher uh, viscosity is to increase the temperature. And the way I get gases to have a lower viscosity is actually to decrease the temperature, which is quite interesting. Okay, well, that's it. That's the summary. So hopefully that makes sense. We're gonna get some practice on this. We're gonna be doing a lab having to do with flow rate. We're gonna do some worksheet stuff. We're gonna get lots of practice at um, learning these skills. But that's the basics of viscosity and flow rate. Have a good rest of your day.